Welcome back mushroom folks. In this video we're going to go through a quick guide on how to grow gourmet mushrooms at home. We're mostly focused on lion's mane and oysters, but this method also works well for shiitake, chestnut, piapino, and many of your wood-loving gourmet mushrooms. To get started, you'll need a scale and some hardwood sawdust, or sawdust pellets like I'm using here. These pellets are made for smokers and can commonly be found at hardware stores. You'll also need a bag of fully colonized grain spawn. You can order this online ready to go or you can make your own which we'll show you later on in this video. Next you'll need a handful of filter patch bags. These are just specialized plastic bags with a filter on them to help your mushrooms breathe but protect them from spores and other bacteria that are in the air. And then you'll need a humidity tent. So here I'm just using a plastic bag with holes in it, but you could also use a plastic tote. And lastly, you'll need a fine mist spray bottle to help keep your mushrooms nice and humid. Now we're going to run through the steps to make your own grain spawn. So if you've bought yours online, go ahead and skip to the next chapter of this video. To prepare your grain, start by adding 885 grams of dry grain to a filter patch bag. I'm using millet here, but you could also use brown rice, corn, rye, or any whole grain that's available to you. Now add 475 grams or milliliters of water to your bag and fold it up neatly. Add your grain bags to your pressure cooker and sterilize them for 2.5 hours at 15 psi. Once your grain bags have cooled completely, you'll want to inoculate them with some liquid culture or do a grain transfer with another bag of fully colonized grain. Here we're just using some house-made lion's mane liquid culture, but you can also find syringes of liquid culture online. Now I'm inoculating each bag with about 5 to 6 milliliters of liquid culture. Once all of your bags have been inoculated, you'll want to shake them up to evenly distribute the liquid. Now seal them with a bag sealer or tape and set them in a dark room or closet to incubate. After about 7 to 10 days, you should see some growth. At this point, you'll want to check for contamination and break up the established mycelium. Shake up the bag to evenly distribute the mycelium. This will help it rapidly and evenly colonize the grain. Now, leave the grain undisturbed until it is fully colonized and white with mycelium. At this point, your colonized grain spawn is ready to use. Now it's time to prepare the hardwood substrate, which will give our mycelium a substantial food source that will allow it to produce a healthy yield of mushrooms. Start by adding 975 grams of hardwood sawdust to your filter patch bag, followed by 1,293 grams or milliliters of water. Now fold up your bags nice and flat and pack them neatly into a large pressure cooker and sterilize them for two and a half hours at 15 PSI. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can add boiling water to your sawdust instead, but you may experience varying rates of success due to contamination issues. Once your substrate has cooled completely, it's time to inoculate it with your fully colonized grain spawn. You can do this inoculation in open air, but a still air box or laminar flow hood is recommended for more consistent results. With clean hands, break up your grain spawn so that it will be easier to mix into your substrate. Now open up your substrate bag and pour in a small amount of grain spawn. I typically go for about a 10% inoculation rate, so if you have 5 pounds of substrate, you'll want to use about half a pound of grain spawn. If you want to stretch your grain spawn a little further, you can use a lower inoculation rate like 5% or even as low as 1%, but this may prolong colonization times. Now mix everything up until the grain is evenly distributed and seal the top of the bag with a bag sealer or tape. Label your bags with the date and variety and place them in a dark room or closet for incubation. You'll want to check on your bags every couple days until they are fully colonized. The bags shown here are about 7 days after inoculation and you can start to see some thin mycelium spread across the bag. 
At about 20 days after inoculation, these lion's mane bags are ready to fruit. The colonization time will depend on which variety of mushrooms you're growing. When your block is fully colonized, it's time to cut it open to expose it to oxygen and humidity. This will stimulate the mycelium inside to form mushrooms. Using a clean knife, cut a 3-4 to four inch slit in the long side of the bag and tightly roll down the excess plastic. Place the block on its side and cover it with your humidity tent. I'm just using a plastic bag with holes in it, but you could also use a plastic tote. You'll need to spray down your humidity tent as needed to ensure that condensation is always present, especially when the mushrooms are forming. This is the most important step, so if you see the humidity tent drying out, that's a good sign you need to give it a good spray. After about 7 to 10 days, you should see the mushrooms start to form. Continue spraying your humidity tent for about another week until the mushrooms have reached full maturity. For lion's mane, you'll know it's time to harvest when it turns from a pinkish to a whitish color and the teeth or spines start to elongate. Also, if you notice any yellowing or browning, this is a good sign that it's time to harvest. For oyster mushrooms, you'll want to watch the cap. As it matures, you'll notice that the cap goes from curved downwards to progressively flattening out and then eventually curving upwards. You'll want to harvest the mushrooms before the caps start to curl upwards. Now your hard work and patience has paid off and it's time to harvest your mushrooms. Gently twist and pull at the base of the mushroom and you're ready to cook and eat. If you're not quite ready to eat them just yet, you can store them in the fridge in a paper bag for about 7 to 10 days, or you can dehydrate them for long-term storage. To dehydrate, I like to pull them apart in about half-inch pieces and dry them at 115 degrees for 24 hours. These will store in an airtight container for a very long time. You can use dried mushrooms to make soups, stir fries, medicinal mushroom powders, and much more. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Good luck on your mushroom growing journey and we'll see you in the next video.